Welcome to the Mischief. I'm Valen, and this is Create. Today we're going to be covering how you can make your own simple elevator. That's right, this one's a little bit more complex, but we're definitely going to get into that. As you can see, this is a very simple uh, yet effective solution for making your own elevator. Now this one is a little bit more disguised. I could have it even further disguised if I so desired, but I think that this is uh, quite sufficient. Actually, let's bring that back up so I don't fall next time. <laughs> and let's get into something a little smaller, simpler, and uh, you can also expand it as you like, like this. This is probably one of the more compact ways that I could think of how to make one. And I've got a couple different ways I'm going to show you how you can power it and a couple different ways that you can actually use it to raise and lower things as you desire. So to start with, uh, let's break everything, right? Um, so, I, I mean, as you can see here, I've got a whole bunch of stuff going on. We don't need most of this. We're, we're just going to get rid of all this. Blech. Don't need it. It's gone. Get rid of those. Get rid of those. Starting off with just a couple of buttons and a slab. Right, so you basically need to have two destinations, usually a top floor and a bottom floor. I don't have this thing set up so that you can actually do uh, multiple levels <laughs> in this case, but I mean, hey, if you want to, you can. So uh, in this case, let's actually set this up. We're going to start with a linear chassis. I'm going to put this over here on its side, and this is what's actually going to be extending out some kind of platform. Now, if you want to make it bigger, you can. But for now, I'm making it just wide enough to support me, you see here. But before I do this, I'm actually going to make it sticky. So it's actually going to grab the things that I want. In this case, if I hover a wrench while holding on to engineer's goggles, you can see the area that it's going to try and move with it. So I'm going to actually reduce that to be the area that I want it to move. This is very important. If you in increase this too far and some of these blocks have other blocks sitting on top of them, then they're not going to move. So you need to keep that in mind. Now on top of that, if you want to expand this platform, I've just got it being like a, this, the linear chassis and a couple of slabs. If you want to expand this further, you can actually put more, right, here we go, let's click on the side here, more of these on the side and then continue on with that. Just make sure that the the shaft that you're going to actually have, the elevator shaft as it is, is going to be big enough for the entire platform to go up and down in. Now in this case I'm going to leave it here and you can see I clicked on here with that slime block or the slime ball but I did not click on the back side of it because if I did then when, when you look here, it says three blocks. I reduce it to two. If I had other blocks in this space here, like another platform, if this was sticky on both sides, it would try and grab both sides of this. So that's something to keep in mind. But as it's only sticky on one side, it's only going to take the blocks on the one side of the uh, linear chassis. Now you can use radial chassis as well. You can place one of those down and have the uh, blocks connected around them and then grab that. But in this case, I'm just going to use something a little simpler. Uh, so let me move this wrench. We're going to put this back the way it was. There, done. And I find that it's usually best to work backwards in this case. You don't work from the power source forwards, you work back from this to the power source and that allows you to kind of keep it a little bit more compact or at least in my experience it is. So therefore you're going to need to have something lifting this and dropping this linear chassis. And in order to do so you're going to need a rope pulley. Put one of these here and then you should be able to go, right? It's done. No. Put a redstone lever. No. You still need to power this thing. But before you can power it, you need to be able to actually have it go up and down. Otherwise, when you power this, it'll just go in one direction, most likely just down. And then you, you can't get back up and you've eliminated the whole point of an elevator. So you're going to want a gear shift. What this does is that when it's take, given a redstone signal, it will reverse the uh, mo uh, rotational force going into it to the opposite direction. So therefore this, when it was going down before, will then go up. Now you don't want to use a lever, I was just using that to demonstrate what is going on. Now in order for this to work best and keep it simple, you're going to want one of these, a powered toggle latch. Yes, you can manually flick the lever on this thing. Don't bother though, you're not really going to want to. You're going to want a few redstone links, one for the bottom, one for the top, and one for right here. 
and you're also going to want an empty hand. Reason being is that this is going to be receiving the signal from the I want to go down button and the I want to go up button, which is down there. In this case, if you sneak and right click with an empty hand, it returns into a receiver and therefore outputs a redstone signal. You see this arrow here, it will then output a redstone signal in that direction. You can put redstone between these, you can put redstone between these or even over top of them, etc. But you can't, redstone signals will not come out of the sides of the toggle latch. It will only go in on one spot and out on one spot. Something to keep in mind when making this. You're probably going to want to label some kind of frequency. In this case, I'm just going to use an oak slab. Therefore, if I put down a couple of these things, if I have like two oak slabs, it's a totally different frequency. It's not going to actually transmit. You see that's not actually lighting up. Now if I clear that away, you can see it now is sending a signal over there. And this is a request to go down or up. Basically it's an elevator call or send button. Whichever is in the current spot, it will do the opposite now. So then I'm going to want one at the bottom of the elevator shaft. We're going to want it to be the same frequency as the others. Therefore, all of them should be the same. Yep, there we go. And it therefore is turning it on or off. Let's keep it off for now. I don't really want to mess with that. So it still needs power. We now have a way of having this go down and up as well as a call button at the top and bottom of the shaft. But we are going to need power going into this. And you don't need to have it going into a main huge power system that you have. No, in fact, you can get away with some of the most basic stuff there is. In this case, I'm recommending an encased fan. They're very simple and straightforward. But you're going to want to be able to actually use them. So <laughs> let's actually have that going, shall we? Uh, in this case, uh, I'm going to take... Uh, I'm going to show you the most compact method that I know of in this method, and that is using a, a large cogwheel and a rotation speed controller. If you don't have that, then I will show you another method for getting a bit uh, more of like manual method. But I'm, I'm going to start with the compact, and then we're going to backtrack to the, uh, the much bigger, chunky one that is uh, probably a lot cheaper because the rotational or the rotation speed controller. Um, does require integrated circuits and me mechanical crafting, which you might not have access to at that point, but it will definitely save you a lot of space and it will make things very adjustable. So if you look on the side here, it has a speed of 16. You can have it go up to 256 if you so desire and have the, the fastest elevator going up and down that you possibly could want. Uh, but what I recommend is that you don't do that because then you'll start taking fall damage when it goes down and uh, you might end up it might go up so fast that you you know get kind of glitched through the platform so I recommend my area that I say is kind of a sweet spot is 128 you can get away with 192 but if you're on a server um, you might have some issues with that and you might also take fall damage from that as well It'll probably be very little, but you might also glitch through platforms. So I recommend 128 It's still a really good speed No damage is taken and most likely is the fastest you can get away with uh, With safety on some kind of server setup, but either way uh, no damage 128. It's very fast now I need this to still keep going faster, right? So this connects into here and this needs to connect into a fan which you can use a magma block or you could use a campfire would be my two recommended ones you could use lava or netherrack with fire but those things burn and i hate it when i've got a wooden structure specifically like this and then the next thing i know the thing's on fire and the roof is gone oh it's terrible but <laughs> we're not going to worry about that in this case we're going to grab a gearbox which all this does is allow any kind of, here, let me actually break this. If you look, it has uh, the inputs and outputs on all three sides going around like this. We're just using it in this case to go in a right angle down. Reason being is that we've got this encased fan that we need to put in place. Now, if you put this down, it will have the fan go up. If you put this sneak down, the fan will reverse. So in this case, I'm going to try and place it above and we'll find out if it works. You might actually be able to see through here. Yeah, you can see through the side that it actually is connected because this looks like this. If it looks like a, a fan blade, then you need to break and replace or uh, reverse it with your wrench, which you should be able to do so. It's just a little bit trickier to do. 
because then you can only switch sides like this, but if you can get underneath it, then you can rotate it so that the fan is facing down. Once you get yourself a magma block or a campfire, depending upon if you really want to go into the nether, I'd say the poor man's version is going to be the campfire, um, but you will get some sound effects from that. But it is really cheap and you don't have to go into the nether. So at least that that's kind of a good way about it. And that is also going to work well with the, uh, the method I'll show you afterwards. But uh, this being said, and you can have this going up higher if you want, down lower, whatever. But you'll see in a moment here what's going on. Let's actually turn this on. We're going to need a lever. Turn that on. Oh, and there we go. It's that simple. So if this is actually blocked, the, the platform that we have chosen, just those two blocks plus the chassis, right? And we've got this, uh, the rope that comes down from the rope pulley. We'll come down and grab it. Let's say I break this and then I press the button. Rope pulley goes back up, right? This is just me demonstrating a little something for you guys. Let's put this here. I'm going to need that slime ball again. There we go. Put this here. So we've got the same platform. Now watch what happens when I click the button. Rope comes down, grabs onto the linear chassis. And this is where a lot of elevators go wrong. If you have something over top of this that is blocking it, it's not exactly going to grab as it's supposed to do. So you might need to do this. Whoa! And adjust things as appropriate. In this case, I forgot to rotate this down to the, the level of, uh, what was it, two, I think it is? Yeah, two. And you only have it sticky on the one side, of course, because, uh, you know, anything more than that's going to be a little bit crazy. But there you go. We now have the restored elevator. And it's it's very simple. If provided that you work backwards in my mind, which is, you know, from the elevator back to the power source, because then that really allows you to kind of build it as you need to. If you start power source and try getting to it, it's going to be difficult because this rope pulley is basically where things are going to be starting. Now, if you want to take this a step further, you can always have like, a, what was it? I was saying radial chassis here. You can put one of these in place. Uh, let's actually see if I can do this. On the side no it's not going to let me because i need to build something next to it oops there we go what radial chassis do is they allow you to take a circular area now in this case you can see the sides are not sticky so it will not grab anything but if i stickify all these then they will become that way take this and this will take this plank and this chassis how much is this chassis going to try and take? Way too much. Let's bring it down to just this little platform, shall we? And we'll see what happens. Now, if I try clicking this button, the entire thing comes down, but you can see it did not fit into the opening in the ground because I did not make the, sh the uh, elevator shaft big enough. But it is a much bigger platform to work with now, so therefore I can get up here, and I can therefore work with... A little bit more it's it's pretty nice because it will grab those blocks that are next to it in a basically a radius so one block radius will grab that and it's pretty darn cool you can have you know you can connect them with cages and stuff like that but this is the the radial chassis plus the uh the linear chassis now let's say that you want one of these sooner and you want it to go fast because if you if you know anything about these uh encased fans they have a speed of 16 RPMs. Right now, we're at 128, which is a lot faster. So let's say I break these. I don't have this anymore. What am I going to do? Oh no, don't worry about it. You just grab yourself a bunch of cogwheels and you're going to be fine. You take a small cogwheel onto the back of this large cogwheel, then you add another big one onto that, small one onto that, big one onto that, small one onto that, big one onto that. You guessed it small one onto that and there you go it's that simple four sets of these going into probably another gearbox in my mind just to do that whole right angle into another encased fan or something else that you know you may desire over type of so, oh, over top of some sort of heat source powered by redstone you can see we've got 16 rpms but up here it's 128 and it goes just as fast as before and therefore you've got yourself a nice elevator up 
and down. And it is the same basic idea that I have going on with this room here. Now you notice I have a button in the room in the ceiling. That's because up here I just have a redstone link on the other side of the block in the ceiling. And then down below is a little bit more complex. If I go into spectator mode and I drop down here, you can see that I actually have an entire platform, a linear chassis set up, like a 3x3 three three connected to a, a bunch of create shafts on a linear chassis connected to another linear chassis, all going into the wall over here. It's pretty darn crazy, but it's still very compact. You can hide it away and not need to worry about it. If you go all the way down to the bottom, all the way down. You can see that I have a space for all this extra ge gear uh, or stuff that is at the bottom. Let me bring down this uh, elevator here, which actually I have the buttons on either side, but behind here is where I've got my redstone link hidden, which is pretty darn nice. And here we go. You can see that the elevator comes all the way down. Now, yes, you can just pass right through rope, so don't don't fall into it. <laughs> and if you place something on top, it's not really going to want to work. Remember that. So you're going to want to make sure that you've got it clear. Now you can make it, and if you'll notice that this button is actually in the shaft as well, because these things become somewhat uh, passable for some items like that. It's pretty darn cool. But uh, you will be able to actually put things on top of this, provided they're all connected in some way, shape, or form via chassis, or stickies or things of that nature therefore you can use it as you desire so i hope you guys enjoyed this really quick bit by bit on how you too can make yourself your own personal little elevator with create and if you enjoyed this video be sure to give a like comment subscribe and as always be sure to uh, you know come visit us over on twitch and uh, don't be afraid to spread the mischief we'll see you guys next time Bye.